standing close to Jesus' cross were his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clovis, and Mary Magdalene. Jesus saw his mother and the disciple he loved standing there. So he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that time the disciple took her to live in his home. I invite you to join me as we take a peek into Jesus' mother's thoughts as captured by Teresa Coleman. That last week was a week of loud noises and conflict. He rode into Jerusalem like a king. He upset a large number of people with his teachings and the ruckus he made turning over tables. Jerusalem during Passover is so tumultuous. The Romans are edgy, the Sanhedrin is nervous, and Jesus talked like he was going to die. And he did. All the things that I had stored in the treasure chest of my heart came back to me as I stood there next to the cross. I took each memory out and dwelled in them, holding them in my hands, gathering my memories to myself. Oh, God, if only I could, I cried. I screamed out until my throat was raw, but to what avail? I don't know what I can say. You don't really understand unless you have watched your own child die. It was a sword through my heart. I have tried and failed. I simply can't do it. I tried, but I cannot imagine what it was like for Mary to watch the torture her son, Jesus, endured. To see him hanging there, in pain, bruised, bleeding, his side pierced, thirsty. To remain there and watch him suffer and die. To hear him speak his last words and watch him take his last breath. I don't think one can even attempt to understand what this was like for Jesus' mother Mary, unless they have watched their own child die, as perhaps some of you have, and as did Mary. Jesus' pain was her pain. I tried and I failed. While I have a college-age son, still more than a decade shy of Jesus' years, I can't imagine what having, having to endure what Mary did. As I reflected and attempted to imagine what this would be like, the closest I could come was recalling the intense fear I felt when many years ago, my husband and I were waiting to find out whether our son had cystic fibrosis. Thankfully, he did not. It's notable that John's Gospel does not name Jesus' mother, his mother's sister, or the disciple that Jesus loved. While we may readily voice the name Mary, Jesus' mother as one who was present, she is unnamed in this passage. The author of John's Gospel would have us understand not that Mary is unimportant and thus not to be named, but that Jesus' unnamed mother and aunt symbolically represent the early church, believers who Jesus placed under the care of the unnamed or beloved disciple whom we refer to as John. There is power in the simplicity of the word Jesus spoke. Woman, here is your son. Here is your mother. These two short phrases, nine words, powerfully link, symbolically and concretely, Jesus' earthly past with the future of the early faith community, those who will continue on in following Jesus' tradition. 
Jesus' mother was there from the beginning. From when the angel Gabriel visited her and informed her she would become pregnant and bear a son. She was there through Jesus' growing up years and as he grew into adulthood and his ministry. She was there at the cross. As was the beloved disciple. Jesus, as the eldest son, was ensuring that his mother would be protected and cared for in a tangible and concrete manner. Yet symbolically, the author of John's Gospel communicates something else. Gail O'Day, a Johannian scholar, states, At the heart of Jesus' ministry is the creation of a new family of God. The creation of this family is symbolized here when the beloved disciple takes Jesus' mother to his own home. While Jesus was rejected by many, the beloved disciple's reception of Jesus' mother signals the possibility of a future marked by acceptance, not rejection. Woman, here is your son. Here is your mother. In and through these words, and in and through the pain and grief that engulfed them, I hear the heartbeat of love beating without pause as Jesus expresses his compassion and love toward his mother and his beloved disciple. Jesus binds together at the foot of the cross, the past and the future. Love is at the core. A mother's love. A son's love. God's love. Love is at the core of life's joy and at the core of life's pain and loss. And for that eternal, boundless love, we experience in and through Jesus, through his life and his saving death, we are grateful.